Good afternoon, everyone. This is Brother Brandon coming to you live from Fort Smith, Arkansas, with another Fisher's Amen video broadcast. And I'd like to welcome to you to our postponed Tuesday night Bible study. And I couldn't do it Tuesday, but I am I postponed it to today, so that's why I said postpone Tuesday night Bible study um, had off today so today was a good day for me to do this and uh, so we're going to be getting into Matthew 6 this afternoon <clears throat> hopefully it's a blessing I don't know if we'll finish it or not and uh, but I might just take I might just take the time to actually go through the whole thing because it's I mean it's 34 verses long and um, I got I got plenty of time today so if this takes us like an hour and a half to get through it <coughs> then so be it um, but I'm just gonna I'll take the time here to uh, to to do Matthew 6 today Lord willing we'll we'll do the whole thing and then Tuesday we'll do Matthew 7 and uh, Matthew 7 won't be that won't be that long. It's only got 29 verses in it. So, but anyways, it is good to be here this afternoon. Um, I do apologize for having to postpone this video to today, but I think today worked out better. So, um, <clears throat> if you guys have any prayers or praises, feel free to mention them. Um, I'd say for prayers, keep me in prayer. Keep uh, pray for my videos, pray for my ministry, um, pray that this would be a blessing to those who hear it, and, um, you know, pray for our brothers and sisters, pray for our nation, um, we ought to pray for our nation, even me, we, we all need to, I think we all should pray for our leaders in our nation, no matter if they're wicked or not, I mean, if they're wicked, we need to pray that they get saved, they probably won't because they're so hard hard and stiff neck, but who are we to judge, right? So, <clears throat> you know, and our nation is not heading in a good direction right now. It's, it's pretty bad. So, <clears throat> let's, you know, we ought to pray for our leaders. We ought to pray for our nation, pray for each other, pray for the lost, pray for family, you know. We ought to pray for those people. Amen. We ought to pray for our families and our friends. Um, keep Brother Joey in prayer. He appreciates those who pray for him. and Because uh, he struggles with pain here and there. He has good days, but he also has bad days. So please keep Brother Joey in prayer. Um, well, I think that's going to be it for that. Uh, tomorrow night, I want you all to kind of keep this in mind. Tomorrow night, there will be no, uh, broadcast because I will be preaching at my church. So that will be in replace of a broadcast. So there is no broadcast tomorrow night. Um, but I will record my message and put it on Facebook and Sermon Audio and YouTube. Um, it will be about the blood of Christ. And it's Memorial Day, so it is a, I think the blood of Christ is a good reminder to what Christ did for us. Um, there, is, there is no greater love than this than for a man to lay his life down for his friends. And that's, what, that's exactly what Christ did for us. And that's exactly what our soldiers did for this nation. They... You got people who enlist. Thank you. Thanks for the shout out to the haircut. I got that. I got it done yesterday. <coughs> um, but you've got people that sacrifice that enlist into the military, and they put their lives in the line, and even they may they e they may even die in battle, all because of our freedoms. And that should not be taken for granted, especially we're at a time right now that they're taking our freedoms away. And they're making the deaths of these patriots, these, these patriots, 
their deaths, they're it's starting to become meaningless now because of the fact that our rights are being taken away. So, um, you know, they, they lay their lives down for the nation. But Christ, most importantly, Christ has laid his life down for us. Amen? <clears throat> so, that will be tomorrow night. Um, other than that, I think that's it. Um, so pray for the message tomorrow night, if you will. Um, <clears throat> so that, I think that's going to be it. So let's go ahead and let's get into the Bible study here. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to start in verse 1. Matthew chapter 6. Starting in verse 1. It says, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no, father, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Okay, so alms. What alms means is, sorry, I got to hold this up a little bit closer. Um, alms means charitable gifts to the poor. Okay, so when you give to the poor, what Jesus is saying here is when you give to the poor, don't do it openly. Don't do it openly before men so that you can, you know, because, you know, so that you can receive praise from man. <clears throat> Jesus said, you'll have no reward of your father, which is in heaven, if you do this. If you do it openly before men. You know, when you do certain acts... Before men and otherwise otherwise in other words if you do things if you do such things to get a man to get man's appreciation first of all your motive is wrong and secondly um, that's pride that's pride <clears throat> when you do things for the for the praise of men, that's pride. And it's not just pride, but you're putting the fear of man above the fear of God. And we ought to obey and fear God rather than man. Amen. Now, in Proverbs 29, uh, 29, verse 25, it says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Okay? We ought not to have a fear of man. Because it brings a snare, a trap. Now, pro we've got that we we have that. Now we have the issue of pride. Because when you do things for the fear of man, when you do things for man's recognition, you want to puff yourself up. That's what you do. You puff yourself up, you start stroking your ego, and you just want to be you want people to flatter you. Okay. Now, <clears throat> it says in Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. In Proverbs chapter 11 verse 2, it says, when pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. In Proverbs 13.10, it says, 
Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well advises wisdom. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. <clears throat> okay. So if you do things to puff yourself up, to have your ego stroked, Hey, first of all, pride is sin. Do you think God is good? So let's, let's think about something here. Pride is sin. Do you think you're going to receive a reward for pride? Nope. There's a difference between reward and grace. Grace is getting something that, grace is something, is getting what you don't deserve. Okay? A reward is something that you do deserve. And if you do your alms and you give to the poor just to earn man's recognition... God's not going to give you a reward. Why? Well, first of all, if you're doing it just to get man's attention, you have already have your reward. The praise is of man. Don't do things for the praise of man. Because the praise of man is only limited. And it's only there for a season. <clears throat> so when you do things, we ought to do things with the right motivation. We ought to do things because we want to do those things because we know that God loves us. We are not to do it for the praise of man. When we do things for the praise of man, then we become prideful. And when we become prideful, God is not going to reward you for that. That's foolishness. It's foolish when you've got preachers that think that, oh, you can live however you want to and God will, God will bless you for it. Really, is he really gonna is he really going to honor your sin? I don't think so. <clears throat> you see, God will judge sin. He will. God will judge sin. Don't make make no mistake about that. He hates sin but loves the sinner. And you can't just live however you want. We have to live by the book. We all have to live by the book. All of us who are born again have to live by the book. And we need to do things by the book. You know why? Because God does things by the book. He wants us to be by the book. That's, how, that's where we ought to put our faith and trust. Is by the book, by the word of God, by Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> so I think I sort of exhausted that point. I think you, I hope that you get that. Okay, we are not to do things for the praise of man. Now, verse two. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms. Do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets. They may have the glory, check this out, the glory of man. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Did you hear that? Jesus, I'm not going to say much about this verse because I sort of already touched on it already. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. But here's the thing. 
Jesus is saying, don't sound a trumpet. Don't make your works known as the hypocrites do. Hypocrites just want the praise of men. They don't want the praises of God. They want the praises of men. Jesus said they already have their reward. So how are you supposed to do your alms? The answer to that is in verse 3. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. <clears throat> Did you guys get that? What Jesus is saying here is that when you give to the poor, now don't get me wrong, giving to the poor is a good thing, but when you give to the poor, don't be going around telling people, look what I did, I gave to the poor. You've already got your reward. Do you see how that's pride? Look, look what I did. Look what I did. It's all about you. When you do your works and you announce it to man, you're saying, look what I did. You know, as a believer, you didn't do nothing. That's what, it's Christ within you doing that work. It's Christ within you working through you to do that. You didn't do anything. You know why? Because God said, your righteousness are as filthy rags to God. You have no righteousness. Only Christ does. So when you give to the poor, you go up to a man, you go up to a man or woman that's poor, you give them, you give them some, you give them some money. And that's a whole nother message. Because nowadays you have to be careful about that. <clears throat> you know, when you give to the poor, don't go around announcing it. Do your business. Go to the poor person, do your business, either buy them a meal. Or, or give them some money. And that's it. Keep your mouth shut. Don't say a word. Don't go around advertising it. Because in time, God will reward you for it. It would be better for God to reward you than for man. You know, you get all these people that, oh, well... I, I, I give this to charity. You know, even you, you don't even lost people give to charity. But those lost people that give to charities doesn't make them right. Doesn't make them saved. Anybody can give to charity. And when you go around... And, and when they start, and when even when, when you see lost people going around advertising that they've done these things, and they get the praise as a man, you know who's not getting the praise? Christ. So what does that make you? A thief. Why? Because you're stealing the praises that God is supposed to get. I know that sounds really harsh, but that's the reality of it. Don't be going around advertising stuff just to get the praise of man. Because when you get the praise instead of God, you're a thief. Because you're getting the glory that God's supposed to be getting. All the glory goes to God. The, no glory or praise should ever go to you. It should go to God. 
You know why? Because every little thing that you do, every good act that you do is not you doing it. It's Christ through you doing it. So therefore, Christ gets the praise. And this life, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about none of us. It's about Christ. It's about God. Amen? <clears throat> so when you do your alms in secret, when you do your alms in secret, God will reward you openly. Amen? I think I beat a dead horse with that, so we'll just continue on. Um, now Jesus is going to start getting into prayer. In verse 4. Or verse 5, sorry. I, re I already read verse 4. So verse 5 is when he starts getting into prayer. It says, When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue, and in the street co corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now, with that said, I'm just going to make all the stuff that I said up to this point about alms can be applied to prayer as well. Again, don't pray in the open where men can see you. Pray in your closet. In your prayer closet. Pray when you are alone. Don't be out in front of man, you know, getting man's praise. Praying in church is one thing, but going out in the street corners and, and praying and shouting and, and, and trying to do that just to get man's attention, that's a whole nother ball game. Jesus says, don't do that. Okay, now I'm not going to touch... I'm, I'm only going to say that because I, I already feel like that I've already said enough with the alms I could it could also be applied to prayer as well all right <clears throat> now um, and when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men verily I say unto you they have their reward but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. I think it's self-explanatory. I'm not going to say much about that. But when you pray, use not vain repetition, repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. That's a big one. You know, you know, you have all these mega churches and all these churches that want to seem spiritual. They all start singing and praying in these really weird languages. You don't even know. Them. Honestly, they're, I say weird languages because they're just babblings is what they are. It's not an, It's not an actual language. But you have all these weird babblings going on and you get all these you know you know people repeating words and prayers and 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 saying all these long lengthy like repetitive words in these prayers and they think they're going to be hurt and, and, and they think that god's going to hear them for that Don't use vain, repetitious, don't use repetitive words. I'll give you an example. You remember when Peter told Jesus, if it's you, Lord, call me out. And you know when, when Peter started walking in the water, when he fell? Peter prayed a short prayer. A two-worded prayer. Or three-worded prayer. Sorry. Three-worded prayer. You know, you know what it was? Lord, save me. Do you think Peter went on with a whole bunch of babblings and started doing all this repetitious? Repetition? No. All he did was cry out to the Lord and said, save me. 
You know what Jesus did? Saved them. You don't need no fancy repetitious prayer. You know, a prayer can be as simple as, Lord, give me grace today. If you ask, you will receive, right? You don't need to be given all this vain repetitions just to get grace. You just say, Lord, please give me grace. Prayer is simple. We complicate it because people say, well, you must say this, you must say that to get this and get... No, that's witchcraft. Don't be like the heathen and start using witchcraft thinking that God's going to hear you. Saying all these prayers just to get God to do... By the way, if you say prayers to get God to do things for you, That's witchcraft too. You know why? Because in witchcraft it says you must say this in this way in order for you to get something. God is not your genie. God is not your genie in a bottle. He is not your dog. God is God. And if you pray and say, Lord, please remove this, this thorn from me. God may or he may not. And if he doesn't, there's a good reason for it. <clears throat> okay. But if he does, then praise God for it. But God is not your genie. So don't be going around making all these vain repetitions just so God can do things for you. Okay? As a matter of fact, really, when you, when you take time in prayer, it really should be a time of repentance and just asking God to forgive you. And really just talking to Him. Telling him what's on your heart. He already knows what's on your heart, but he wants you to tell him. He already knows everything about you, but he wants you to still he wants you to still tell him anyways. You know why? Because that's how a relationship works. That's how communication in a relationship works. God communicates to us through his word. We communicate to God through prayer. And he hears us. Amen? But people ought not to treat God as their personal genie. That's a disgrace. So don't use vain and vain babblings to go thinking that God's going to hear you when he won't. You know, as, as a matter of fact, the Bible says if you regard sin in your heart, he won't hear you. Think about that. If you regard sin in your heart, he won't hear you. Um, I gotta find the verse. I can't find it out, but we'll move on, okay? But God will not hear you if you regard sin in your heart. <clears throat> now, it says, be not, in verse 8, it says, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of him before ye ask him. Okay, again, Jesus already got Jesus and the Father, they know what you need before you even ask him. Mm. 
They know that. But there, I mean, there are times, most of not, most, most, most times if not, you know, God wants you to still ask him anyways. Um... It says in verse 9, After this manner, therefore, pray. Okay? Jesus is teaching you how to pray. He's teaching us in how to pray. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. You see how simple that prayer was? You see how simple that prayer was? It's not complicated. I like to I like to put out a challenge for you guys and for me. Okay? Here's my challenge. Every night before you go to bed, I want you to pray the Lord's Prayer. How Jesus teaches us and how to pray, I want you to pray that. Every night before you go to bed. And see if there's a difference. Like, if you have trouble, like, praying like me, because I have trouble with my prayer life, too. I don't always pray as I ought to. But I want to challenge even myself and all of us listening to pray the Lord's Prayer every night before bed and see, and see what happens. And I'm not saying, I'm not trying to say... You know, see what God does. No, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to. You know, and a God could do something, but I'm not trying to say. You know, do it to expect something from God. No, but pray that prayer every night before you go to bed. That's my challenge. <clears throat> pray the Lord's prayer before you go to bed every night. I'll, I'll, I'll do it too. I'll do it too. I'll stop, I mean, I, I will stop, before I go to bed, I'll stop with everything I do, and I will I'll, I will pray, I'll pray that before I go to bed. And I'm not saying that you should, you should pray it, or you have to pray it, no, I'm just challenging you to pray it. Amen. And don't just, and we shouldn't just pray it. Flippantly, we should ought to pray it because we want to pray it. Because that's how Jesus taught us and how to pray. Amen. Now, verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive, forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I think that's very self-explanatory. I don't think I really need to get into a whole bunch of notes on that. If you forgive others for their sins, then God will forgive you. If you don't forgive men of their trespasses, then God won't forgive you. We ought to forgive everyone. We need to forgive our enemies. We need to forgive our brothers. We need to forgive people. 
for what they've done to us. You know why? Because God, for Christ's sake, forgave us when we did wrong. So shouldn't we forgive others? If God, for Christ's sake, forgave us of our sins, and yet we can't do that for others, then we're a hypocrite. We ought to extend that. If God forgave us, we, should, we, we ought to, by God's grace, forgive others for what they've done. Now, that's not necessarily an easy thing to do. That's why I say we need to do it by God's grace. Because only by the grace of God can we ever do anything. Jesus said that without me, he can do nothing. But Jesus is emphasizing that we need to forgive others for what they've done to us. And that is much easier said than done, but grace will help you. Amen? Grace will help you. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Again, <clears throat> so the things that we've been talking about by doing things for the right reason and not gaining the praise of man, all that can fit in through all these areas that we're talking about whether you do your alms whether you tithe you know whether you know you fast whatever you do for God don't do it in the open do it in secret then God will re reward you openly Amen. Don't don't do things, you know, just for the praise of man. Because if you do things for the praise of man, then you're 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 you're, you're puffing yourself up. You don't don't do that. Verse 19. It says, "Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth." Where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You know... There's nothing wrong with having nice things. There's nothing wrong with having nice things. However, you don't want to be building yourself, you don't want to be building up for yourselves good things on earth. You know why? Because number one, you'll you'll just be attached to it. And the moment that you become attached to your stuff and not unto God, that's idolatry and spiritual adultery. Okay? Second thing is, why would you want to be attached and store things up on... He on, on, no, no, on why would you want to... Why would you, why would you want to build... Stuff up on earth. When eventually all that stuff's going to be burned up anyways. Okay. In Second Peter chapter 3 verse 12 it says looking for and hasting. Actually hang on a second. Let's go to Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10. 
Okay, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Listen, you can store as much as you want on this earth, but eventually, it's going to be burned up. So why, why would you want to build treasures up on here for? And by the way, Jesus said, especially the times that we're, that we're going into now, people will break in and steal. Listen, you can have all the $90 million mansions and the 50,000 plasma sound system, you know, and all these nice things. But you know, robbers can, can, can bust in and steal. And, and if that doesn't happen to you, just know that one of these days, all that stuff's going to be burned up anyways. So you can't take it with you. We'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> but in verse 12 of, of 2 Peter 3, it says, Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the, the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Everything on this earth is going to be burnt up. Um, all right. Um, and the point I want to I want to get at is this. We came into this world with nothing, and it's certain that we can take nothing with us. Okay, um, let me, let's see here, I'm trying to figure out the verse here, um, Certain. I'm trying to see what the verse says here, so please be patient with me. Um, all right, let's actually. You know what? Hang on a second. Something came to mind here. Take nothing out. Um, take nothing. Uh, I can't find it. Here we go. I found it. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. It says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Thanks for being patient with me. I apologize. I should have been a little bit more prepared than I was. And that's my fault. But do you see that? We carry nothing into this world. We brought nothing into this world. And it's certain that we can carry nothing out. Um, Job says something very similar to that. In Job, chapter, in Job chapter 1 verse 21 it says, And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Listen, folks. 
You don't carry anything when you, you didn't you didn't you came to this world with nothing and you'll leave this world with nothing. Why would you want to st- and, and so that's that's the point I want to make is why would you want to cling on to something that's going to be burned up that you can't take with you? You know why? Cuz it's going to be it's going to be sitting here be burning up one of these days. So don't 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 aim to store things on earth, because everything that you have and see is just it's temp it's temporary. Jesus said, "Lay treasures for yourself up in heaven." How do you do that? How do you how do you lay treasures up for yourselves in heaven? Well, I believe it's you know being obedient to what God tells you, doing things for the gospel. Witnessing, preaching, whatever it might be. Doing things for the benefit of God's kingdom, not for your own. Amen. So don't don't store treasures up on earth, but store them up in heaven. You know why? Because in, in heaven, no thief would no thief is gonna break into heaven. You know why? Because thieves don't thieves do not inherit the kingdom of God. Nor do adulterers. Um, let's see here. It's in Revelation. Here we go. No, it's not. It's actually in Uh, what happened with this? Now the, the print is kind of small. I don't know what happened. Oh, there we go. Uh, so 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10. It says, Nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So thieves are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. So no thief will break in and steal whatever you built up in heaven. Amen. We're not built up, but laid up in heaven. Amen. So no thief can no thief will break in and steal whatever you laid up in heaven. Because they won't they won't inherit the kingdom of God. <clears throat> now um verse 22 it says the light of the body is the eye if therefore thine eye be single thy whole body shall be filled with light but if thine eye be evil thy whole body shall be full of darkness if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness how great is that darkness Have you ever taken a a look at, like, videos and pictures of Kenneth Copeland? Like, just in his eyes? Kenneth Copeland is a false prophet and a false teacher. And you take a look at his eyes. You just take a look at his eyes and you notice, like, he's, like, possessed. He must be like possessed with devils. Like you just you look it I mean it's scary. You look in his eyes and it's just I mean you could tell there's like a darkness over that guy. This is what Jesus is talking about. I mean you take a t- like I tell you what, you take a picture of a born again believer and compare that picture with like Kenneth Copeland and just look at their eyes and see if there's a difference. I bet you there will be a difference. But Kenneth Copeland, the way his eyes are, he's that guy scares me. That's that guy scares me. Just just his just the eyes. Just you know that guy must have devils on him. I mean, he's a devil-possessed man. Speaking lies and uh, speak, you know, 
speaking lies and, and truth and hypocrisy. Speaking damnable heresies. That's not needful. On his eye, I mean, it's scary. It's just, whoo! He kind of creeps me out a bit. <clears throat> um, then it gets in here. It says in Matthew, uh, Matthew uh, uh, verse 24, Matthew 6. It says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life and what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Now let's back up here for a second. Okay? You cannot serve both God and money. Okay? Now, mammon. It's the Aramaic word for riches, money, wealth, sometimes personified as a false god or an object of worship, often regarded as an evil influence. You cannot worship God and money. By the way, do you know what the Bible says about money? Do you know what God says about money? <clears throat> 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The love of money is the root of all evil. I'm not saying money is evil. I'm saying the love of it. And by the way, if you want to know about, if you want to know what is the love of money, just look outside your window towards D.C. Take a look at our politicians. Take a look at the, take a look at the politicians. Their motive is for money. You cannot serve God the true God, and yet, and yet have every one of your motives be about money. Mm -mm. You know why? Because when you have your motives about money, you're being selfish, you're arrogant, you're a hypocrite, you are a liar, full of pride, full of ego. Just saying. Bible Christianity is is about Christ, not about you. The love of money is all about you and what you want and what you can do to keep your power. You cannot serve two masters. Um, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Here, and we're going to start in verse 20. It says, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Did you just get that? Paul says, I'd rather you not... Paul says, don't have fellowship with devils. Here's the next part. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Did you guys get that? 
you can't be you can't be a partaker of God and the and partaker of devils. It doesn't work like that. Again, you cannot you have um, you can no no one has two masters. Either you will hate the one or despise the other. Amen. You only have one master. You cannot have two. It, it, there's no two ways here. It's either you're for Christ or you're against him. Simple as that. Um, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And uh, let's see here. And we're going to start in verse 14. <clears throat> it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness, righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement uh, hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Verse 17, what does it say? Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You can't serve two masters. What relationship has does Christ have with Belial? None. There is no relationship with Christ and Belial. I think I made my point. Now, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for rain, raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye? You, O oh, oh ye of little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or withal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Now, there's some verses that came to mind. Oh, I just want to share. Here's the first one. Um... Oops. Okay. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1. It says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Can I tell you something? We are to take one day at a time. Jesus is saying all this. Why? Because he's showing you the necessity of trusting him for all your needs. Think about what's going on right now with high gas prices and baby formula and all these things. While big brother government is trying to be a dictator, God knows where you can get the where you can get what you need. 
but you need to trust him. And you don't know, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Okay, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has, tomorrow has, you know, <clears throat> the tomorrow has its own challenges. So don't worry about tomorrow. Okay. And hang on a second. I just want this. Um. So, and what we see here in Proverbs is that. Oops, did I pass it? No, I did not. Okay, and the thing is, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So, why are you, why, let me ask you a question. Why are you worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow when you're not guaranteed tomorrow? Amen? You're not guaranteed tomorrow. Um, tomorrow has its own evils. Okay. Um, there's a verse in James I want, I, that came to mind too, and I'm trying to get to it. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, all right, Lord, help me out here. Okay, found it. Praise the Lord. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 15, it says, For that ye ought to say... If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Okay? You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. For all you know that today could be your last day. You don't know. Life is nothing but, is nothing but a vapor. And um, James chapter 4, verse 14 through 15. Let's, let's read this. It says, Whereas you know... Not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time, and then vanish away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live, and do this or that. Amen. So you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And James says that your life is but a vapor. We ought to be trusting God in, in, in all of our necessities. We ought to be trusting Him. The question is, will you trust Him today? Especially now, with all these shortages going on. You know, I'll, 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 I'm going to be honest with you. There are times even I kind of wonder how, how, how all this stuff's going to happen. What if this or what if that? <coughs> but the but the matter of fact is we have to live today for today. Um Excuse me. Um, I'm trying to think of what uh, 
the first and there's a verse that popped in mind I can't think of I can't remember what it says um Let's see. Let's try the word worry. I'm trying to think of what uh, the verse says. Uh, I can't think of it right now, but the thing is, is Jesus wants you to focus on today. Tomorrow has its own evils and worries of its own. <clears throat> Amen. So Jesus wants you to take each day as it comes. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. Believe it or not, we're almost done. And believe it or not, we're going to finish up here because it kind of it kind of ties into what my point is. In verse, let's start in verse 32, which says, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Here's the verse I was thinking of, and I couldn't, I couldn't think of it, and I guess the Lord is trying to point me in the direction to finish it off. Verse 34 Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. That's the verse I was thinking of. <clears throat> and I was foolish of trying to scour around and trying to figure out which is which and all that stuff. Um... So forgive me. So that's actually it for, for Matthew chapter 6. But I want to say this in closing. Okay. Um, I want to say this in closing. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. And I mean a lot of stuff. Food shortages, high gas prices, you name it. And we see that this is causing a lot of stress. It's causing a lot of anxiety. It, you know, we wonder how, how are we going to survive? How are we going to do all this? You know, what's, what are we going to do? Well, let me tell you what you need to do. What Jesus said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. <clears throat> In all things, seek God first. Amen. God knows what you need before you ask Him. But you need to seek Him. Why? Because seeking Him shows that you are fully trusting in what He says and you're submitting to what He wants you to do. The question I have for you is, do you trust God? Do you trust God today? Do you trust God that He will provide with all your basic necessities? God knows that you need clothes. He knows that you need food. He knows all these things. Amen? He knows all these things. And uh, hang on a second. Hang on. A verse just popped in mind. I want to share with you guys.
Okay? Psalm chapter 37, verse 25. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Let me, let me read that again for your comfort. I have been, uh, it's, it's Psalms 37 verse 25. I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed baking bread. <clears throat> you know, God knows what you need. Even these, in these times, and these uncertain times, He knows what you need. Amen? He knows what you need. Okay, but what you, will you trust Him? Will you trust that He will provide for you the things that you need? I didn't say want. I said you need. Food, water, shelter, clothing. God will provide, will always take care of his kids. You may not know how he does it, but rest assured he will. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Christ wants you to seek him. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to focus your attention on him. Not on yourselves. Your circumstances will try to pull your eyes off of Christ. That's what happened to Peter. When he looked around, when he saw all the waves crashing, that's when he began to sink. When he came out to walk on the water to Jesus, when he took his eyes off Jesus and when he focused it on his circumstances, he began to sink. Your circumstances, if you take your eyes off Jesus and you put them on your circumstances, you will sink. But this is a time when we need to keep focused on Christ. We need to focus on the Word of God. We need to serve and, and we need to occupy till He comes. We need to be about our Father's business. We ought to be witnessing and preaching and, and doing what God has called us to do. This is not a time to slack. We need to do what God has called us to do. And if you need to get right, then you need to get right. Amen? So, <clears throat> how long have I been going on here? Almost an hour... It's an hour twelve, so it's almost a, it's almost an hour fifteen, not quite. It's actually pretty good for for like thirty nine verses or thirty four. Sorry, I said thirty nine, didn't I? I meant like thirty. I, th I think it's like thirty four verses. We went through yeah, thirty four verses. We went through. There's a lot of good. A lot of good stuff, though. A lot of stuff to talk about. Um, so, yeah. You know, we need to focus on Christ. We need to focus on God. We need to do... We need to trust Him. Especially now when all this stuff is happening. The question is, who are you going to trust? Are you going to trust the government to take care of your needs? Or are you going to trust God to take care of your needs? Right now, you've got two options. Trust Caesar, trust Christ. Whom will you trust? Can I just tell you what I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you I'm not gonna make your choices for you. You make your own choices. But let me tell you what's gonna happen if you trust Caesar. You trust Caesar. Caesar is gonna come out and say all the things that you want to hear. He 
He's going to say all the things that you want to hear. But you know what's going to happen? He's not going to do anything to make it happen. He's going to, Caesar is going to tell you what you want to hear. But he's not going to do anything to make it happen. Don't let that surprise you when you've got politicians that say stuff you want to hear, and then when they get in office, they don't do it. Don't be surprised. That's what you're going to get when you trust Caesar. Can I tell you something? When you trust God, God will provide for his own. When God says he's going to do something, he's, he's going to do it. Whatever God says, God is going to do it. You know why? Because God is a man, he is, he is a man of his word. You want to know, do you want to know a true gentleman? The true gentleman is Christ. Christ is that true gentleman. Gentlemen keep their promises. When they say they're going to do something, they are going to keep their promises. Christ is that he is that true gentleman. And you know what? All you guys that are believers, one of these days, we're going to be just like him when we go home. But everything down here is to prepare us for that time. Amen? So, listen, I hope this was a blessing to you. Um, if you guys like this and enjoy this, I want you to share this thing. Share it with people. I don't care who you share it with. Share it with people. It needs to be said. It needs to be heard. If the, if the Holy Ghost is leading you to share it, you share it. Don't Listen, don't wait for my permission. If the Holy Ghost is telling you to share it, you share it. And you share it as, with many people as you can. The gospel needs to get out. Amen. Um, just a few reminders. Just, just one quick reminder. Uh, tomorrow there is no. Um, I'm blanking. No broadcast tomorrow. Because I'm going to be preaching at church. I am going to be recording it. I'm going to be recording it. So when I get home tomorrow night, I will post it online, and it will be up there tomorrow night. And that will be in place of the, of the, that will be in place of the, um, broadcast. <clears throat> so that's what's happening tomorrow. Tuesday. Yes, I said Tuesday. We will be getting into Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 is on Tuesday. So be prepared for that. This broadcast today was 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 supposed to be on Tuesday, but I postponed it to today. Okay? So, no broadcast tomorrow and Tuesday will be on Matthew chapter 7. Okay? Um what else do I have? I think that's it. So, um, yeah, so that's it. So, other than that, that's all I got. Um, Lord, uh, I love you guys. God bless you guys. And you guys are the reason why I do what I do. Um, so you pray for me. Pray for my ministry. Pray for these videos. Pray that it would be heard. Um, and pray that souls would be changed and saved as a result. Amen. Um, other than that, that's all I got. So, uh, 
yeah, so till Tuesday, I love you guys. God bless you. You guys have a good rest of your weekend. Have a good, have a good beginning of the week tomorrow. Have a good day in church. And uh, Lord willing, we will see you all on Tuesday. All right. God bless you guys. Love you. See ya. Bye.